Dan Geltrude is an accounting professor at Montclair State University, and he joins us now. Dan, the market absorbed the rate hike news with ease, but there are some people out there who are very concerned about what this means for the future. Kevin O'Leary, you might know him as Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. He talked about what the rate hike could mean for regional banks. Take a listen. You keep squeezing the toothpaste tube, you keep rolling it up, you keep raising rates and you know things are going to break. You just don't know when and where. And I'm predicting, and I'm very cautious on this, it will break down in the regional banks which support 60% of the economy. We started to see the cracks, the Titanic has not sank. Remember those three banks that went under? It started with Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic and Signature Bank? There's 4,600 more of them, and you have to assume that some percentage of, of them are managed by idiots. Dan, your thought on that prediction? Well, I don't disagree completely with Mr. Wonderful there, although I have disagreed with him on the topic of banking. When those banks were getting in trouble some months ago, Mr. Wonderful was talking about how we don't need regional banks. Let them fail. I disagree completely with that. I think at the time the government did the right thing by stepping in. Now, as interest rates continue to go up, yes, there is going to be pressure on a lot of banks. And yes, that is going to impact mid-sized to smaller banks. However, the inflation issue is a major problem. So the Fed is really caught in a catch-22. Do we put more pressure on the banks knowing that we could see a number of them fail versus dealing with inflation that simply is so stubborn we can't get rid of it completely at this point? Let's move on to beer, if we can. That Dylan Mulvaney controversy not over yet. Beer consumers making this widely known turning to other beers other than Bud Light. Well, Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, reportedly here laying off hundreds of employees now due to the slide in sales. Again, uh, Reuters citing a CNN report there. Uh, but talk to us about from the business end of this. Obviously, not fortunate for anyone that's going to lose their jobs. But this ultimately comes back to the decision-making process from the higher-ups. Your thoughts? This may be the greatest example of all time related to know your customer. Now listen, this ad that they ran and this campaign may have worked very effectively in other areas. But Bud Light simply missed completely who their customer base is, and that customer base voted with their feet. They simply stopped buying the product. As a result, we're seeing the layoffs. We're seeing a brand which may have been almost completely destroyed by trying to be, I don't know, politically correct. So sometimes you just have to focus in on what you do well. If you're making a good product, and I guess I don't drink beer, but Bud Light was a good product, then they should have stayed in their lane and kept their customers happy. It's very simple. They're still paying for it, Dan, and people are not forgetting this decision. We'll see if, if something might happen in which they turn it around, really acknowledge why so many customers were offended by that ad. It hasn't happened yet. Dan Geltrude, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you.